Okay, let's start. Uh, welcome to my session about uh, infrastructure as TypeScript. So I'm going to speak about how you can define and declare your cloud infrastructure with the language that you hopefully know well, namely TypeScript. So a couple of words about me. I'm a software developer, so I'm going to speak from a perspective of software developer, not an IT people, operations people. How can I define my cloud applications in TypeScript? And then, uh, obviously, I'm interested in the cloud, and I come mostly from the perspective of serverless compute, if you know what that is. Uh, basically manages cloud services. And I'm also a big fan of F Sharp and F Sharp at work, so it's great to see many F Sharp sessions here, but not mine, unfortunately. Uh, for my session, I'm going to use uh, one sample application. I'll go through building this application in the next 20 something minutes. It's going to be a URL shortener. You probably know what that is, like bit.ly or akn.ms. So uh, it might look like this. You have a screen where you can put a short alias for a link and then the full link there to save it into the database. And then when somebody goes to your website and then this short alias after the root, it gets automatically a redirect to the URL that you defined. So pretty straightforward. Hopefully you understand the, the problem we are trying to solve. I'm going to solve it. I'm going to deploy this application to AWS and I'm going to use uh, serverless. So Lambda functions as the main uh, compute module, and then DynamoDB for SQL Store. So basic uh, layout of my applications, I have two Lambdas. This, if you don't know what Lambda is, it's just a piece of code running in the cloud somewhere for you listening for an event to happen, for example, HTTP request. So one Lambda is listening to post requests to add newer URLs, it gets the name and URL from, from post body, <coughs> and then it puts it into DynamoDB, which is like NoSQL Store in Amazon, managed by Amazon. And then there is a second Lambda which listens to all the URLs that people might visit, gets the path, looks up if this URL exists in the database, and then if it does, then it returns 301 redirect to that uh, URL. Pretty basic stuff. So I start with code. This is all code I need for one Lambda. It's basically 10 lines of code or so. I import some SDKs. It doesn't really matter, but I import some SDKs. I then I get object with event. I get the path from that event. Then next, I make a query to the database, namely uh, DynamoDB. I construct the re request, get the response if it exists. Then I will return 301. If it doesn't exist, then I will return 404. So this can be done in like half an hour. I need, obviously, I need the, the second function, which I don't show here, to add URL. But it will look almost exactly the same, but just sending data to Dynamo instead of reading it. Pretty basic. Now, how do I deploy this to Amazon? Well, actually, the actual setup is a bit more complicated than my first diagram because Lambdas cannot work directly with HTTP. So I need to put an API gateway in front of it. Also, I need to store my site somewhere. I choose to, to store it in S3 bucket, which is like a file store in Amazon. So I need two more pieces in my puzzle. And of course, I need to wire them together. So I need to set up all the permissions to access from API gateway to Lambdas, from Lambdas to Dynamo. I need to put my objects into the bucket. I need to define the API gateway. It's quite a complicated beast. It needs stages, deployments, endpoints, whatnot. Doesn't really matter. There are a lot of moving pieces. When I count this, it's about 20 resources that I need to provision just to run this small application, which is about 20 or 30 lines of code so far. So how do I approach this problem of provisioning these resources in AWS? Well, there are many options because a lot of people have to do something with this, so there are many, many options. I'm going to run through really quickly some of them just to understand the landscape, and then I'm going to su suggest another one. So the first obvious one, you go to a website made by Amazon uh, console, you click the buttons, the UI is more or less easy to follow along, you set up all the combinations, they do some magic behind the scenes like setting up permissions by default. So it's relatively simple good for exploration, but it's very hard to reproduce these things because when you do it today and your colleague does it next month, it's going to be two different environments. And you don't want this for your production environments where it's staging and so on. Also, you need to be able to evolve this application over time. And then again, you already forgot what you did last time and how, how you need to change it this time. So it's not really good for commercial, long-living applications, right? Uh, Basically, we want to script the provision. The, the obvious thing when you say script is CLI. So there is a tool from AWS, from Amazon, that you install, and you have a command line interface 
and you can do all the things that you could do in a web console with commands. Now you can, it's a bit harder to discard, discover all those options, but once you're done with the script, you can save it to your source control, and then at least you can share it with colleagues and reuse it for the future. The problem with scripts is that they are very imperative. So you, you say what to do step by step in exact order instead of describing your environment, your desired environment as you want it to be. So you, you really have to say what to do in exact order instead of describing how you want your environment to look like. like what. Uh, so there are tools, and this concept is called desired state configuration. So you describe a desired state of your system. Uh, and then whatever the current state of your system is, you say, please migrate my system from this state to the, my desired state and go figure out how to do this in an optimal way. That's the idea of this kind of tools. The default one for AWS is uh, cloud formation. Basically, you write your YAML files, which are text files, essentially, with all the, the definitions of resources. That's just a small example. Uh, there is a URL shortener example on the web, which I found. It takes about 300 lines of this file to define that simple application. So it's quite verbose. And also, you don't get things like IntelliSense or compile time check, because it's just a text file. So can we do better? Uh, Actually, it's also very specific to AWS. So you, if you want to move to Azure, you basically lose your skills there. One, another option is Terraform, very popular in, in the community. Uh, it's open source. It works for multiple clouds. So you can more or less transfer your skills between clouds, although their exact definitions of resources are not going to be different. But at least you know the way it works, and, and uh, you can reuse some skills there. They use their own proprietary format, but uh, it's, again, a text-based format. Format. And another example that I found was about 500 lines of Terraform to produce an uh, environment for uh, uh, Amazon-based uh, URL server. It might be more c complicated than mine, but still, it's a lot of code. Order of magnitude more markup than the actual code in Lambdas. Okay? So uh, there are also more specialized tools that uh, raise the level of abstraction, like serverless framework. It's still textual files. It's still YAML in this case. It works for multi-cloud. Uh, but uh, it's focused on serverless applications. So you can define lambdas with less lines, let's say, and then bind them to the resources, to event sources, API gateway. So the same code is like 100 lines of code, or even less, maybe 70. Uh, it's most akin. It's easier to learn, obviously, but it's not universal. You cannot use it for all the resources in AWS. You only use it for a subset of, of those resources. So what, what have we learned so far? What are the desired properties of uh, the tool that can provision infrastructure for us? It should be scriptable. It should be able to reproduce it multiple times. Multiple deployments should give the same result. Uh, it should speak in the language of desired state. So I want to describe my environment and then ask the tool to provision it as, and I don't care how. Uh, ideally, it should be universal for any service in the cloud and also multi-cloud or maybe even applicable for hybrid scenarios like Kubernetes or, or whatnot. And then the question mark is language. The, all the tools that uh, I mentioned so far, they are using some sort of texture markup, YAML file, files most probably, especially in Kubernetes space. So is that ideal? Well, I say that I want to use the same language that I already know, for example, TypeScript or C Sharp or F Sharp. Uh, instead of markups. And I want to get all the benefits of those tools that I already have, like IDEs and uh, compiler, code completion, IntelliSense, to provision my environment. And the library which does this is called, called Pulumi. So for the rest of the talk, I'm going to talk about Pulumi as a library. Uh, the promise is basically that it does all of this, but also you define infrastructure in the language of your choice. And at the moment, I think they support TypeScript, Python, and Go. C Sharp, F Sharp might be coming in the future because those folks come from Microsoft background mostly, but it's not there yet. Uh, so I have a T-shirt of Pulumi, but I don't work for Pulumi. It's a company and open source product, so you can use it for free uh, as long as you don't need their enterprise level features. As always, it's like a free tier that you can use for yourself versus some paid services from the company, like support and uh, integrations and so on. 
Uh, it's all open source. I, I did a couple of con contributions. It's mostly the engine is in Go, and the libraries on top of it are mostly in TypeScript. That's kind of so. I, at this point, I want to switch to the first demo. It's probably too big. Right, so that's, this is Visual Studio Code, TypeScript. I referenced the NPM package called Prolume AWS, and I'm starting to build my application uh, URL showing. The first thing I do is define DynamoDB table. Uh, it's a TypeScript class that, that I got from, from this library. I have IntelliSense here, so I can see which parameters are there. I, I need to define name and attributes and say that a hash key is key and blah, blah, blah. But I get all the nice features from IDE while, while doing this. So if I make, let's say, I made a typo somewhere here, I will get the red squigglies, and then it will suggest that maybe you, are, you made a typo and you mean right capacity instead. So that's, that's a nice experience. Once I'm done with this, once compiler is happy, I can run command line here, and then I type Pulumi up, which is short for update. And at this point, it will compile my code, and it will run it. And every new resource that this was created in the script, it will map it to resources in AWS. So in this case, it's just one. It's giving me a preview of my plan. The internet is a little bit slow. So it's saying that it's going to create a new stack, which is like a container for all my resources, like a project. And then it's going to create a DynamoDB table called uh, URL. I'm going to say, yes, please create it for me. And then it will go actually to AWS, call AWS APIs to provision every, all the resources that I need uh, for my application. It's shown the progress. It's showing uh, what exactly it's creating. It's smart enough to find the proper order of creating the resources if they depend on each other. And in the end, I can see that it's all created and done. Now, this code might look like imperative, as if I'm giving commands to create resources. It's not. It's just describing what I actually want to get. So if, in case I want to change this, I have already resources provisioned, and I want to change read capacity to two instead of one, right? So I'm made, making a change for my environment. Then I go, do Pulumi up again, and this time it knows the history of my previous operations. So it will compare the history of the previous operations in the last state of my environment with what I want now. And it will say this time that um, it's going to update table URL, and if I zoom out a bit, no, it doesn't work, but it's also, if I go to details, for example, it will say that it will update read capacity from 1 to 2, and that's all that it's going to do. All the rest, it will just remain the same. Okay, I'll hit no for now. So, back to slides to, no, this is not slides. Back to slides just to show how this works a little bit. Uh, here, my file is here in the red rectangle index.ts. Then they have a number of language hosts, one per language, obviously, which compiles the file and translates us to commands to the engine. Then there is an engine, which also keeps the last deployed state in the database. It can be on Polymus Bicant on their site, or it can be a local file just stored in your system or on a shared drive or anywhere, a source control. And then the engine is smart enough to figure out what the exact commands that it needs to do. And then it translates the resource tree that it compiled from, from the compiled language into create update commands to the cloud provider. And on the back end, there are, it's, there are plug plugins for every provider that you can think of, or major ones. This is not the complete list. Also for Kubernetes and some, some other stuff. And it, it, at this point, it's quite dumb. It's saying create this update this, delete this, it's, it's not, the new provider, creating a new provider is a feasible task. <clears throat> so back to the demos. I'm going to switch to no. number one. So now I extended my script. Now it's the same DynamoDB that I had before. But also I defined all the resources to create one AWS Lambda and put API gateway in front of it. And you see that the, the code starts to grow. It's still very much typed, and I use uh, instances defined on top on the bottom. For example, here I use the DynamoDB table to configure my AWS Lambda environment variables. And if I, again, if I make a stupid thing and I use, I forget name here, I try to assign something which doesn't fit 
typed twice, it will say that I'm doing something wrong and will make me fix it before I break my environment, which is very powerful and very short feedback loop. It's, you see that it's still a little bit low level. I have to reference the folder in my file and then say which, which function I want to run from there. And if you look at the API gateway, it's a lot of like very hard to read stuff in order to configure a very simple thing. So it's, it works, but it's, it becomes, again, comparable on the length with uh, what I've, we've seen before with textual templates, YAMLs, and so on. So can we do better? Can we make it textually shorter? And uh, here, again, we can use the power of uh, real programming languages. We can start inventing abstractions. So on the next step that I did is that I keep my table as is. That's fine. But then I define my own Lambda component. I reference it from the Lambda file. So I define my own component, and then I abstract it away all the machinery that I need to provision a new Lambda with permissions and so on. But I only expose the options that I care about that will differ from one Lambda to the other. And this time it's very short, very brief. And I was able to do this because I'm using a real language which allows classes and components and functions and so on. So in this case, Lambda just defines the folder that I need to look at and then uh, in entry point for, for the code and some environment variables. Uh, REST API is even simpler. Like It's literally three lines of code. And uh, I just say that it should react on this path and then call this Lambda. And if we look at the controls themselves, that's where all the smart things are. So the policies, permissions, everything went here. That's my interface for options that I want to define while constructing the Lambda. And then the component extends Pulumi component resource. And that's the key way to explain to Pulumi that I'm creating a custom control, which will create a child controls inside of it. I'm also saying the name of my component and then create everything inside. So when I switch to command line, I've already ran this to save some time. Uh, so you can see that again, now you can see how complicated it is. It has 11 resources to create, and that's just half of the application, just one lambda. But you can see, if you look really carefully, that there is a three structures here. So my component FOSDEM lambda and FOSDEM endpoint, they are on second level after the stack, and then everything that they create go one level deeper. So you can visualize your structure. There are also tools to like make a picture of this out of your environment. Uh, visualize the structure of your deployment and then see what exactly gets provisioned and so on. So with these tools, you can, for example, create a library inside your company and then share it between multiple teams or even make an open source contribution. There are lots of polymer controls out there contributed by, by somebody and then they can be reused. Actually, Pulumi team themselves, they came up with a library of controls that are quite helpful in my scenario. So that's my next example. So this is now the full uh, application of uh, URL shortener with both lambdas and UI. And it looks it's 44 lines of code uh, without any components of mine. So uh, one line to define DynamoDB table, named URLs and the, with key name. Then I start declaring API in here, just a control. Then with one line, I can say that all the static files should be served at, at, at the root from the www folder that I have on my disk. That's for serving the, the user interface, JavaScript, and uh, HTML. And then interesting thing happened. We have a blend of uh, resource provision and the code itself, because we say, for my API, when I get a request of this shape, URL, and then template, then I want to execute this code. So this looks very much like uh, express application that you would write in, in Node.js. You just have your resource and then a callback on it and they, they already define the code. What Pulumi will do, this control will do, they will serialize this code at compile time, they will zip it, they will upload it to AWS with all the modules, and pay modules that it references, for example. So you can do anything here. There are no limitations or maybe temporary limitations, I don't know. It's still on uh, preview version, I think. It's still not, a, not one with zero yet. But in theory, it works. Uh, also in simple cases like this. And then in the body, you can do your TypeScript, use uh, 
use actual resources which I defined outside the Lambda. You see that I defined my template in the in the script above, and then I'm using it here without the need to know how my AWS DynamoDB table is called and, and so on. I just say get, and then I get URL back, and then depending on the URL, uh, I, I make a response to Lambda. You can also imagine, like for example, having a queue where you, you say new queue here, and then queue on new message, and then you define a handler. So you blend together the definition of in infrastructure and code. The infrastructure plus code is 40 lines of code in this case. That's the second lambda which we actually post. Actually, there is a third one which just lists all the URLs uh, for, for the pipeline. Uh, now, uh, if you look really close at the script, the only mention of AWS is really here when I reference Cloud AWS. For the rest, it's old table, API, and then some callbacks. So they went one step for further, and you find I replaced just one line in this program. It's called Pulumi Cloud. And all, all the rest stay the same. Well, I, I renamed AWS to Cloud also. So now uh, I define that in my configuration file, I want to use Cloud Provider AWS and the region. And this is all that is required to switch between cloud providers. If I want Azure, I, I put Azure there. They have Azure provider. They will load the library, something like Azure Cloud, and then provision the resources specific to Azure instead of AWS. So a lot of people, uh, when we talk serverless or managed service, they are scared of uh, vendor locking. Like, what, what happens if, I don't know, in two years' time, I don't like AWS anymore and want to migrate away? So that's one possible solution. I'm not sure it's going to cover everything because obviously you get just a common denominator, not all the features of, of all the clouds. So I'm not sure if that's the way to go, but at least for such simple cases, you can try. And uh, if you really care about being multi-cloud multi at the same time, you can abstract it away to some, to some extent. So that was my last demo, just a couple of other slides. To reiterate, there is like a, several. There are several options, several layers of abstractions that you can work on. Obviously, the cloud API is without Pulumi, and the resource provider is Pulumi providers, which which work on top of that. But then you can either create raw resources as the cloud describes them, be able to set all the features that cloud has, and so on, or you can start creating controls or use controls created by others which are more abstract, more brief, but probably less configurable. And then you go to all, all the way up to abstracting away your cloud with something like Polymi Cloud. So to, to quickly to conclude, if you are doing cloud applications and managed infrastructure, you kind of have to start using infrastructure as code, as they call it. And uh, there are lots of tools provided by cloud vendors themselves, like ARM templates, cloud formation, uh, Third-party tools like Terraform, great tool if you want it. But if you want to re re use real code, so not just configuration, but infrastructure as real code, as TypeScript, for example, you can also use Pulumi and use one of those languages. F# -sharp is probably still very raw, but there is some work there. Uh, with this, thanks, and I have still some questions. These are some time for, for the questions. And this, uh, this slides can be found on my GitHub, and Pulumi uh, has a lot of examples that you can browse through and see how other tasks, if you are not working on serverless applications, but something like Kubernetes again or whatever, you can find an example there. There are hundreds on different languages. So this, thank you. <laughs> Questions? Five minutes. Yes. Your previous cloud configuration from Paragon style and loaded. Often your cloud will like to go down. Can you query the current config state instead? From the cloud? Yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah, there is a command called Pulumi Refresh. It will go fetch the current state of your resources. So if you change it manually or delete something manually, you can say Pulumi Refresh and it will ask you whether you want to override your state for, with the current state and you will sync it back. 